uh, am, am I wrong there? Okay. Uh, so it, it was getting in disrepair, so they closed it. And then when they did do it on it, they found out that one of the employees had embezzled more than $200,000 in that five year period. So the FBI came in and the FBI kept it closed. And after a building is closed for a year, it has to be brought up to code. So in order to bring it up to code, there's some extensive renovation that has to be done. Now that's going to be done, and it's going to be done on our tax. We're putting up, as taxpayers, the one and a half million dollars to renovate the inside of this building. So that not only is this our building, but that should give us that much more say so about what is done in the building. Well, Destination Cleveland County came to them, uh, came to the commissioner, and they wanted to do the Earl Scruggs Center there. Let me back up and tell you how the Earl Scruggs Center began to begin with. Jim Allen had an idea. If you look on the, the uh, records, you'll see that Jim Allen is still listed as the chief agent for that corporation, which was the historical museum. He wanted to give the museum a shot in the arm. So he had an idea of why did we not just um, do a room or a section of the museum and honor our uh, musical heritage. So he and a group approached the Don Gibson family and the Earl Scruggs family about the possibility of doing this. It was supposed to encompass some other singers too. Somewhere down the line, it got to the point that Don Gibson and uh, was going to have to go to another building because the Scrubs family wanted the Scrubs to be there and, and Don Gibson to be somewhere else. So this is where Destination Cleveland County began because Jim Allen pulled out and said we can't do this just for one. So then Destination Cleveland County picked up the ball and it was, at that time, if you look back at the newspaper, it was called the Southern Heritage Museum. And they were taking a look at moving our artifacts to a different building and having it solely for this. Somewhere down the line, it got to be the Earl Scruggs Center. And how they got into it being the Earl Scruggs Center was one of their consultants told them that the same museum does not bring people in, that you need a hook. So the Earl Scruggs name would be the hook that would get people over here to come to the museum. Well, they approached the county commissioners and they, they uh, proposed doing this Earl Scruggs Museum for the courthouse. And the commissioners at that point should have opened it up where everybody else in the county would have had an opportunity to present whatever they wanted to do for the museum or to say that they just won't anything else other than the historical museum to be there. But the commissioners didn't step forward and let the public know that this building might be available. And it's immediately when Destination Cleveland County went to them and proposed this Earl Truck Center, that Destination Cleveland County began advertising and marketing that it was going to be held in the courthouse. They have not been given permission to do this even to this day. Now, I talked to Mary Acker about this last summer. She said she had a problem with uh, some of the burden. And I said, you know, you need to have them take this off until it is actually given to them. Now, if, if I say that we have an accountability problem with our commissioners and our, our hired, our uh, elected officials, we have a credibility problem with Destination Collecting County. If these people are going to be the leaders, and again, I remind you that they are self-appointed leaders. They are not empowered by the people. We didn't elect them, and we didn't hire them. And the real danger with this type of leadership is that you can't fire them, and you can't vote them out of office. So they have gone to the commissioners, and they have asked for this building, and immediately they marketed it like it's theirs. And that squelched anybody else going and, and looking to do something there. And so I, I call that false advertising. I look at that as lack of credibility. The second thing they did is when this fell apart at the courthouse, when the Earl Scruggs camp decided that Don Gibson camp could not be in there in the same building, the county commissioner should have stepped in right then. They should have stepped in and said, wait a minute, you know, this is going to, to be like this or it's not going to be done. They did. 
and and uh, destination Cleveland County. Let that when the, the power shifted from them to the Earl Scruggs County. And so I look at that as a credibility problem. And the second thing is they had to go sign the building for Earl Scruggs, I mean Don Gibson. And when they went to sign the building, they went to Rogers Theater. And I was saying to Andrew Hopper that when they went to Rogers Theater, um, Uptown Shelby Association owned the building at this time, not Bob Rogers. He had sold it to Uptown Shelby Association. And Uptown Shell Association wanted to buy it. And he had even gone, Bobby Rogers had even gone to uh, John Edwards and got him to get a grant so that the Uptown Shell Association could afford to buy it. He reduced the price, and at the same setting, he wrote a check of $35,000 to Uptown Shell Association to help rent pay it. And so when Destination Cleveland County went to the Rogers Theater to look at that as a venue, for the Don Gibson Theater. They, there is a clause in there. They were all aware of it, they read this, that this Rogers Theater would always retain the name Rogers Theater. When they put up that sign last December, it said Don Gibson Theater, and it did not say Rogers Theater anywhere, and Bobby Rogers questioned it, then that is when they picked up their toys and went home. And so, but this is not what they will say. They will tell you that it wasn't big enough or all these other things. I look at that as a credibility problem. And they, they say that they do have a PR problem. Well, well that is uh, the point where we are now. So then they went to the uh, state theater, the old flip, and got the city of Shelby to allow them to use the flip theater. Now, the city had bought uh, this Flick Theater, so they would have a place for the police department to expand. And now I don't know what the police department will do when the expansion comes. But the, uh, Rick Howell, the city manager, negotiated for the city with Destination Cleveland County for the use of that building. And this was what they negotiated. A dollar a year for the next four years, and then they could buy it for tax value. Tax value is $207,137. And, and they gave them an agreement that if they can raise $500,000 that the city will match it with another $500,000. They will give it to them. So in essence, when they give them that five hundred, when they say, I've got my $500,000, then the city's going to hand them $500,000 and then they're going to hand them two hundred back and say, here's the building, thank you for the $300,000. Now let's clarify something in, in um, their favor because you can look at this as I did to begin with and thought, now wait a minute, how can they let our firemen go uh, lose their job and and then they've got 500000 to give to uh, Destination Cleveland County. This comes out of motel hotel tax and motel hotel tax has to be used for tourism. And we take in about $100,000 uh, a year this next year we'll probably take it more because of the American Legion. But this is five years worth of motel hotel tax. One thing they could have done is they could have paid off the carousel mortgage and they would save the interest on that loan and they could have used that interest money to keep the fire working. So, you know, that's a, a side that they could have done. But anyway, this is where they are on that uh, Don Gibson Theater. Now, back to the courthouse. When when they um, approached them about having this as the um, Earl Scrub Center, and, and the commissioner said nothing, they they uh, have have let Destination Cleveland County come periodically and give them updates. And about a year ago, I started looking into this, and in, in uh, spring, I started talking to Brown about the, the, I say this is the scope, but you refuse it. Let me tell you what's been said. You know, you all need to get it out to the public. I started with the commissioners too. In October, I uh, approached the commissioners at a meeting and I told them that they needed to answer some questions. I gave them a list of eight questions. I gave each one of them a copy. That if they would answer these questions in a public forum, that we uh, would come to better terms, the citizens of Cleveland County and destination Cleveland County. To my knowledge, to this day, they have answered them. 
but it was things like, is there an agreement with El Paso Cleveland County and, and uh, Cleveland County? And if this opens up, who gets the money? Where does the money come from to rent pay it? This type of thing. And so still, there's no answer to that. And so now, um, they approached them in November, November 20th is the commissioner's meeting, and they asked for the use of the courthouse for the Earl Scrub Center. And they came in with no documents, and I think the commissioners were ready to, to give them a carte blanche because Eddie Holbrook said, I've heard enough, and I'm ready to say, to accept the proposal. And uh, Mary Acker goes, who's back in the And, and uh, Johnny Hutchins goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are we voting on? He said to Brownie, if you were prepared, you would have a document in here with you tonight. I'm not voting on anything until I see what we're voting on. And he said, I'm for Heritage 150%, but I want to see some paperwork. What you're going to do is fill this and so forth. So they left it that uh, David Deere and the county manager and Bob Yelton, the county attorney, would uh, negotiate a, a consensual uh, lease agreement for them to look at for the use of the building. They had to be back by January 15th with this, and they still have not come back with it. I don't know what's holding it up. I don't know if it's the law you're in or what, but something is, uh, is holding up uh, getting those papers signed. Now, this is where I have a problem with the, uh, with the accountability of our government officials. Because the first place I just told you, they didn't come forward and let everybody know that this building was available to do anything with. And in the second place, when I started looking at their corporate papers, I saw that on their board of directors, our city manager, Rick Howell, is an ex officio voting uh, member, and also our county manager is an ex officio voting member. Uh, there's some chairs back there in the room. Would one of you men help? There's some up here too. Yeah, okay, there's more here. There's more up here. But our city manager and our county manager are sitting on their board negotiating our money, our taxpayers' money, and our building. And I spoke at the county commissioner's meeting two weeks ago, and I told them then, I said, you can't sit on both sides of the seat. Now, um, uh, Destination Cleveland County came out with a beautiful brochure recently, and they sent it to the people that they wanted to uh, get the money uh, from uh, to, to get the endorsement. This is the brochure that they sent out, and, and there's a, a DVD in here. And if anybody would like to take a, a look at this, or if you'd like to copy it, you let me know. I'll make you one. But uh, when I started looking at, at their brochure, I said, "Well, I'll be darned." There is three of our county commissioners that sat on their task force last year that planned their uh, uh, strategic um, planning uh, task force for three uh, for the next five years. They sat on the board that planned it. Now, folks, if they sit on the board and plan it, they're not going to vote against it. So I'm thinking, silly me. When I told Brownie Plaster last summer that I thought she would have a hard sell getting our courthouse, and she said, we'll see. I thought she had to, to sell the seat on the idea. I wasn't thinking about all she had to do was get three commissioners. And here was the three commissioners that is, is in here that, that sat on their board. Who are they? Who are they? Uh, Eddie Holbrook and uh, Joe Bob and Mary Acker. And on this eight-minute DVD, Mary Acker and Joe Bob endorsed it. And Eddie Holbrook also, as is, is on the testimony, endorses it for the community <coughs> college. I'll be happy to bring her to see this tonight today. I'll make you a Well, no, it's not, because I have been to the Institute of Government in Chapel Hill. <laughs> what <laughs> man? Of course, it's Dr. Stevens and Dr. Clinton Bale. It's not. And they would have to get 10% off the pay before it would be against the law. But it is a conflict of interest. That it is a violation of the yep. And I talked to David Deere about this last fall. And I said, David, I have a problem when you sit on this floor. And, I, and he said, I'm not voting. And I said, well, if you have a problem in Destination Cleveland County, I'm going to go to the Chief Operating Officer 
here in Cleveland County. And that would be you. And if you're sitting on that board, I'm going to know right off the bat that you've got a vested interest here. And um, so, and the same thing with the, the city. Um, Rick Howell negotiated the state theater, the FLIG. He negotiated those terms that gave them $500,000. So in my mind, he was negotiating with himself. If he's a city board member, then he was negotiating with himself. So two weeks ago, I went to the county commissioner's meeting, and I said to them then, I, I said, I have a problem with this because I think this is a conflict of interest. And I said, uh, I said to David, I said, you sit on their board at with voted right. And I said to the, the three commissioners, Mary Acker happened to not be there that night, so I was sitting to Judge Bob and Ed Holder. I said, you sat on their uh, planning task force that made their five-year plan. And I said, you folks cannot sit on their committees and on their boards and negotiate our money and our buildings. It's a conflict of interest and it erodes trust. And how unfortunate for us as a people if in the final analysis that we do achieve publicity and prosperity at the expense of honor and trust. So this is the point where we are now, is the um, DCC is waiting for an answer from the board about whether they're going to allow them to make the Earl Scruggs Center into our courthouse. And, and this is what I want to say about that. I would not think that most of the citizens would want that courthouse to be called the Earl Scruggs <coughs> Center and, and it doesn't sound like it's for all the people. And I tried to call the commissioner's attention to on page 20 and the yellow pages of our phone book, there's a picture of the Swinsky Law Firm. And it's a very distinguished photograph. They're standing out in front of uh, our courthouse, our old courthouse. And I looked at that picture and I thought, now how different would this be if they were standing out in front of the Earl's Grove Center? And I think they probably would not have had photographs. There. And it's the same thing as if we suddenly changed our White House and decided to call it the George Bush Center. Even if it still had the Lincoln bedroom and it still had the presidential China, somehow it wouldn't belong to the people anymore. And I made this point that just because John Philip Sousa is from Washington, D.C., and if they wanted to do a museum for, for him, they wouldn't give him our Capitol building they go find a building for a museum. This building is the center of our town. It is the heart of our town. It is the point from which all other points are measured. It belongs to all the people. It should be used for the people. It should never be used for one person's name. And I can tell you, when I start looking at the bottom line here, I think it's not that, that we're waxing nostalgic about the Navy's son come home to put his name on the building. And we're not waxing nostalgic about the county that loves him, that wants his name on the building. I think that it is a uh, business proposition on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think that we are using his name as a hook to steer the tourists off of Highway 74 to come into our county. I think that whether the paper says give or not, you, if you're given something, it's an unconditional gift. If you've got to have say so, or you've got to get rewards, like you sell some souvenirs, that's not a gift. Let's call it what it is. It is either a lease or a license. It's not a gift. So I think it's a business thing. And I think this is where the whole thing went wrong. They looked at this, and they say, there's some chairs back there, guys, if you want to see it. They're in that little room behind. I think they look at this, and they, they said, if we can use this as a hook, this will get people in over to uh, Shelby. We're going to get all these bus loads of people for this tourism, and then our economy is going to thrive. So they do an economic impact study, and they have uh, the Royal School of Management over at Garden Web conduct this. And they somehow don't get it finished, so DCC finishes it themselves. And so they come up with this idea that in the next 10 years that we're going to have an, an impact of 204 plus million dollars from these two venues 
uh, about the people coming here and going to restaurants and stores and the hotels. And if you want to break this down, that's $20.4 million a year. That is 500 people spending $117.82 a day, 365 days a year, for 10 years to get there. It's not going to happen. And so even if, if they said less than that, if you still have got to look at this as it's a long shot for whatever economic impact that you would get. So you're looking that now that the, the Earl Scruggs camp split with the Don Gibson camp, and Don Gibson had to go to another building, that added $2.2 .2 million to what they needed. So now, according to their brochure, we're up to, uh, to uh, about $7 million. And when they said the paper a week before last, they said seven million, and it looked like to me that they were talking about seven million just for the uh, the, the courthouse. But however, the, uh, the, they're needing about seven million dollars, and that includes a million and a half that the county's going to kick in, you know, to refurbish um, the building. So now they're going to look at grants, and they're going to look at um, at individuals. There are individuals here in town who are, are throwing money at this. Uh, some of them is the right hefty amount to do it. And there's also, uh, on the back of this, frequently asked questions, uh, how much should we pledge? Each pledge will be carefully considered and evaluated. A volunteer will contact you to arrange an appointment to answer your questions and to, dis to discuss your five-year investment in this as individuals. On the back, it says, will we, we receive recognition for our investment? And it says, yes, at the conclusion of this, this is the campaign they're calling this, their sales campaign, Rhythm and Roots, that an honor roll of investors will be published and special recognition appropriate to a donor level will be designated at the Earl Scruggs Center and at the Don Gibson Center in honor of all who were sponsoring this extraordinary five-year program. Name it opportunities are available. And I go, wait a minute, this sounds like NASCAR. <laughs> it's the next sale cup, and the next time you turn around, it's a sprint cup, and whoever throws enough money at it next year can get their name on it. And I thought, it sounds like Bank of America. It was there at the stadium last time you turned around. So I write the commissioners a little note, and I say, tell me something. This is what this sounds like. <coughs> name an opportunity indeed. And I said, this sounds like football stadium, and it sounds like, uh, you know, the, the Lincoln bedroom for sale. How much is our heritage and our history and our public buildings worth? You know, what are they going to get for it? So, anyway, this is where we are. But I did say here to say at Don Gibson Theater that they were going to give everybody an opportunity to name because on the back of the seat they were going to sell brass plaques that was because so even the, the, the lowest person I guess can scrape together enough dollars to get the name on the back of a plaque. But it bothers me naming opportunities on our courthouse because that just uh, it, it's not up for sale. It reminds me, and I know um, Hal and I have discussed this. It reminded me of, of the uh, of, of Jesus when they were uh, um, auctioning for his his clothes. I mean, I know that uh, uh, we're pretty much of a strong analogy, but this, to me, is sacred ground. This museum and the artifacts that are in it belong to all of us. The poorest person in this county can point to that museum and say, that is mine. My history is sacred. That is my legacy. And the people who left this stuff to the museum, that was part of their life. And this is all we have left of them. This was their legacy that they left it. And this is our torch to carry and to preserve and pass down to a next generation. Not to store away 90% or whatever so that we can sell Earl Scruggs souvenirs and bring it out once in a while. So this is um, where we are now. As, as we're looking at how can we get these commissioners to open their eyes and know that that we want to speak.
speak as a group. We haven't had a voice. I've tried, I've tried to have them do what I'm doing tonight. They should be up here. Do it then. Um, I have tried to get the newspaper. For some reason, the newspaper has been silent. The newspaper has shut down the thread on the chat room where people are talking to each other and saying that they take complaints, that there's too many uh, lines discussing the same subject. And a week ago, Sunday, February 10th, in the newspaper, they did a four-page spread, and they asked DCC some questions. I wish I could have asked them because I still have some. And they said in their editorial, a whole page editorial, uh, enough, uh, uh, enough revoked. This project will be held in this building. Now, the town commissioners hadn't decided that yet, so I don't know if the newspaper can. And they said the Debbie Downer voices can no longer have a day, this, the day in Cleveland County. And now, if you Google Debbie Downer, you will see that this is a character on Saturday Night Live. And it's somebody that's always uh, down and down and negative. But the Debbie Downer <coughs> negative voices can no longer have a say. Yet, I look back at an article in the, the Star, and it was in August of 2006. That article says about courage. And it says how for us to have the courage to stand up and shoot straight and, and, and uh, be willing to stand up for what we believe in and to uh, not worry about dissension. Yet this is a total about turn when they're saying that enough, we've heard enough, go sit down in your corner. So I started looking at this and we felt like we, we didn't have a voice with the commissioners, we don't have a voice with DCC, we don't have a voice with the newspaper. Somewhere we're going to have to be able to have a say and I don't know what we can do uh, to uh, get, uh, you know, get on forward. And another thing that I'm looking at, as I'm looking down the road, if we don't find our voice now, what will happen down the road when they own our building and they lease our building and, it, it, and there's other things that they want to do that, that, it, that we might not have as much say so as we have now, that it, it, they can become more powerful. And again, I think the good, I'll, I'll repeat that, I'll reiterate it, I think the good is that they have good intentions. But I think that however you all feel about this, and I hope there's people here tonight who feel both place, and I hope everybody will speak up and have a say about how they do feel. But I do want to say about the inside of this courthouse, when I took a look at this, uh, this courthouse is 10,000 square feet, and it's on two levels. So that means that we've got 5,000 square feet on each level. And when I took a look at what they are going to do with the courthouse, the upstairs is going to stay pretty much the same. It's going to be refurbished, but it's going to have um, a, a, a stage, apparently, and, and an auditorium, which will be a civic effort room. That pretty much takes the space that's up there. And there's a little ante room. So I don't know, they might be able to do something with those. Now they say in this brochure that they're going to have a gift shop. You know, you, if to be coach, you're going to have to have elevators. And you're going to have to have uh, handicapped bathrooms. And that takes the time. And they say they're going to have a gift shop. They're going to have a permanent Earl Scruggs Museum. And they're going to have uh, a kitchen, I'm not sure. They, they call it food services. Now, I haven't had anybody define for me what that means, whether it means they're going to have a restaurant or whether it's a catering uh, kitchen. But that's going to take space. Also, it's going to take space for administrative offices. Now, you put that all together, how much space have you got left for our art space? And I really appreciate what the volunteers are doing up there getting our artifacts in line, getting them cataloged, and, but I don't think that it's going to have the same impact if we could just go online and look at the pictures of them that it would have to go and actually physically look at the artifacts. I hope that the artifacts that, uh, that we have, that there will be a good portion of them up there. 
Now, I heard Robin Hendricks say on um, Political Smackdown week before last that this would be the history of Cleveland County as told through Earl Scruggs. Now, I, I can understand, and, and I'm not sure that if he meant that, just like that, but I can understand how you could take the history and say, well, when North Grove grew up, you know, it was cotton fields and it was uh, mill villages, and this type of thing to tell it. And I do know of one song that's already been written that will be used in a future <coughs> act, as you see, and it was a song that Darren Aldrich and Dr. Bobby Jones wrote about the Lily Mill. And um, I'm thinking, because I'm speculating here, that you push a button, you know, and maybe you'll hear, uh, and maybe they'll have some things from the mill or something. I don't know exactly how this operates. I have been in an uh, interactive museum, and I really do like them. I think after a while, you get sort of tired of pushing and listening, and then you sort of start picking the high spot. Um, but that's where we are as far as uh, the inside of the museum. Uh, in the presentation of it. They're looking at it two uh, years, maybe, before uh, that, that they have it open. But as far as systems, um, if, if you have some concerns, uh, I wish you would address the commissioners because uh, these are our voices, these are our proxies. We elected them in good faith to vote our questions. And I'll be happy before the night's out to give you the emails for everybody. And whatever elected officials we have here, I know Mr. Eddie Holbrook is uh, in the back of the room, and uh, and so if you'll if you'll tell me who who is here that's elected official. I'm Commissioner Johnny Hutchins, Vice Chair Eddie Holbrook. We okay. came we came as listening because if if I can inject here, we've had several meetings in the Commission's office. Over these questions you've asked, we went over And I don't know if Eddie came to respond to any of it, but I, I think that what, what you're doing, you're combining the theater with the courthouse. The two separate issues, for example, the courthouse is not going to be named Earl Scrub. It's going to be Earl Scrub housed in the Cleveland County Courthouse. And the stand right now, the upstairs will not be made into a stage. It's going to be made as closely back to the original possible and be used for the funerals. <coughs> Anyone who wants to use it can use it. Did Shelby talk to us about the possibility of uh, having their meetings up there? They're, they're pushing for space. One thing that I'm looking at, if we don't let anyone use the building, the building is condemned, the fire marshal was condemned about four years ago. It's going to take $250,000 a year for the next five years to get it where you can go in and out. Like you say, the bathroom, the lights, the stairwell, the upstairs floor, things like that. So this is what all this is coming about. We didn't come to really answer questions. Oh, I understand. Yeah, I just want to introduce you. We, we, got, we got someone taking yeah. notes, yeah. so we will yeah. address these okay. questions at another, another place. Uh, you did mention something I'd like to ask uh, about, John. You said that it's not going to be called the Earl's Center because when uh, when we asked that same question, I believe Margaret J. asked that question of Brandon Plaster, and if it could be called the Cleveland County Historical you have a feature in the Earl Scrub Center, and, and she said that no. it's already been referred to as the Scrub Center. But nothing as far as naming yeah. can be put on the outside of the building. No, but this, this, is, is, a a story, this is a historical monument, so it'll always stay Cleveland County. Now, they, yeah. if, this, if this goes through, there will be a sign somewhere on the yard. There will be a sign on the yard that will say the Earl Scrub Center. And, and one time we will sign on the yard for the, uh, yeah. the museum. So. Yeah. But this is what it will be called because they're already referring to it. Okay, please do. I want to open this forum for anybody that would like to speak. I want to speak since I know that we have a commissioner and we have a commissioner. Uh, my name is Sandra Stroud, and I'm not known to a lot of you. Uh, I fight a battle. I'm not afraid to take anything else. <laughs> and then I have in the past, we filed a lawsuit against the county commissioners and took it all the way to federal court in Washington, D.C. and won. <laughs> and I, for one, am not afraid to do it again. And this is the question that I would like, that I pose to the county commissioners who are present. When did you ever 
post a public hearing to the public, me and every citizen in Cleveland County, when did you post that a hearing would take place concerning the use of a county facility which we all own? When did you post it? Date, time, and where? I can't give you the date, but there was one when they discussed the contract that was open for public hearing. No, I'm talking about a public posting that should come out in the paper. It, was, it wasn't a paper. Uh, what I, what are you talking about? It was a commissioner's meeting. No, I'm not talking about a meeting. Yeah. I'm talking about a hearing. This was a public a public hearing. Did they post it? That was it in the paper? Yes. Did they post it 60 days? Well, where did we get a copy? copy? And, and by the way, I have checked with Institute of Government in Chapel Hill, and it's, it's, it's not illegal not to to uh, post it. it but, be to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but to my knowledge, there has not been. I would like to see that, too. I want to see that. that we and if you can produce that, could you please post that somehow so that we can see it? It's one of the three-minute meetings No, that's... Oh, well, there's three-minute meetings. Well, I've got three minutes to say, I know that we had several up here when we opened for a public meeting and a hearing when we were discussing the contract. Well, that's not a hearing. But, but what, is, what it is, it is, it is different, it's not. It's and there is a line of that. If that is not posted, you know, there, I, I can't find who there is. Maybe there, there is a line of bills. But, uh, but that was my question. Okay, now, if what she's saying is different from that. Now, I have gone to your meetings, and you've been kind enough to, to hear me time again. And, uh, but it is like a three minute, and they've been kind of enough to let me ramble on for four and a half, and even a big enough 30 seconds, because it's hard to get your thoughts together sometimes, even as fast as I talk, uh, to get out what it's all you want to say. But, um, and, and then at the end of that, they say thank you. I want to address your comment about the stage. You want to come up here? Or you want to come okay, back here? Okay. This is Judith Parker Proctor. Margaret J. and I had a meeting with Brownie Slasher and David Deer. Uh, I think it was about October. And uh, we spent about two hours in David Deer's office asking questions about the courthouse. And we specifically asked about the courtroom. We were told, Margaret was <laughs> under the impression it was going to be turned into a dance hall. I hadn't heard that one, I thought that was kind of funny. But Brownie Plaster told us that it was going to be used for performances. It's going to be used basic, uh, stay basically the same as it is. They're going to take out the false ceiling and uh, so that uh, 19 tiles that are still up there will be opened up. But that it is going to be used for, for performances. This thing about the community room has only come up since they've been making a big deal now about the artifacts and how they're going to, and that's been coming out in the paper recently. Uh, I think they're trying to clean up their act, and they're making them put more and more in the paper about the artifacts. So the community room has been more of a, of a point recently. But Brownie told Margaret and me that it was going to be used for performances. Those performances are going to be have to meet the standards of the Earl Scruggs family. And this was told to us by Brownie and David. Okay. Uh, let me think about it. Uh, do we have any more official? Okay, Mr. Let, let me uh, that. Uh, uh, some time ago, I made a, a recommendation to the county manager and to the commissioners, which Commissioner Hutchins also approved and uh, voiced his support. And this was back in the February, it's back in the fall, and I don't have the exact date, but I made a recommendation that the courtroom be restored back to its original position uh, as much as financially possible, and that it be used for community meetings, community gatherings, for uh, City of Shelby Council meetings if they so desire to use it for that and that be consideration be given uh, for it to be named after a couple of former political giants from Cleveland County. Uh, that has been discussed 
uh, pretty thoroughly among the commissioners. And
It's already 1.5. That renovates the inside. Let me ask you. No, that's over and above what we've got to do in the courthouse. If you don't even use the courthouse, we've got to spend that money to keep the building up. If no one's been in it, I've been in it. I mean, it shouldn't have been allowed to get in this state. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. And, and there should have been a set on the floor when it got this. How? We have a question. Say it's the historic museum. Does that mean the million and a half dollars will be available for that? The million and a half dollars we're talking about spending is going to be spent on the courthouse. Right. It's That's not going to be spent on any museum yet. That's what it's going to cost for us to bring that building up the code so someone can go in. Right. So then our things can go back in. And we want to spend more money on doing interactive experiences. No, this, this is not setting it up for the museum. This is just setting it up. The wiring is bad. The stairs is bad. You can't go okay. on the cycle. This is not setting it up to be used. This is just setting it up to preserve it. And, now, and nobody can I'm steal you. I'm misunderstanding the word set up. What, what would we have to do to set it up? <coughs> I mean, what are you referring to? We wouldn't be doing all this interactive stuff that they're spending $2.7 million. We could do without a lot of this. People agree. I think what you're saying is just to renovate it so it can just sit there. Right. That's, that's, all, that's all we're looking at, isn't it? That's all we're spending on it is to get it where it just sits there. <laughs> Could the same hotel tax not given? Do the same hotel tax not given to support the new town? I don't. Yes, it could. Yeah, I think it's qualified for tourism. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Well, if the hotel motel tax had been given to the city of Shelby or the Don Gibson Theater, yeah. I can't know that. Tourism, tourism. I'm thinking that would be something to check into. But I think, I think that the people that are in this room are just a small sampling of the people who turned out tonight of how the people of Cleveland County really feel. There are 100,000 of us, and I say of this destination Cleveland County and the people in, in the Cleveland County that maybe are, are pushing for this, that there may be 1,000, 5,000, that's a, that's a whole lot of difference because I know that when I look at each one of you, and I'm talking your hands right now, don't you all know 10 people that feel like you? Yes. Do you know more? Yes. Yep. Do you know people that have, have been incensed about this? Yes. I have told no lie. My husband will uh, verify for me on this. When every night, do, do any of you ever talk to me at night and my phone's run down, my battery, and I'm having yep. to go get My phone rings from about 7 in the morning. And last night somebody was emailing me at 2 this morning. You can verify that because they sent me the email there. Somebody was emailing me at 12.30. Uh, and this has gone on for months and months. Because, and it's not the same people. It is people that are concerned that this is happening and what can we do? And why is this happening? And why do we not have a voice when it is ours? I encourage you all to listen to the people. This building means a lot to these people. I know that, that in the paper, Skip Foster said, I don't get it. He probably doesn't because he's not from here. That's right. And, and maybe you have to be from here to get it. I'm not from here, but I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, and this is how I feel about that. It's not their baby. They can cut it apart because it's not their baby. They're not from here. Yeah. I feel yeah, like this meeting, uh, Brandon, Brandon, I feel like this meeting is going to escalate. My name is Lady Lavender, and I feel like this meeting is going to escalate from this meeting here. There's going to be more meetings like this all over the county uh, to bring it to the people and forums because it, I know for months you have heard frustration, frustration, frustration. And they do need to know questions and answers. It's just like uh, if there's a contract being drawn up, what's in that contract? What is between Earl Scruggs and the county? The well, commissioners know what's in that contract and what they're asking for. Well, wait asking. just a minute. No, the commission, no. I'm willing to accept the blame for okay. what I've been, yeah. what I'm guilty of, but don't accuse us of something false. Well, we have, we have not seen a contract. No, no, we don't no. Know what's okay. In okay. okay, now okay, the contract. Okay, the police, uh, why is the lease not, what's wrong with the lease? Why is it not already signed? What, what are y'all holding back on? 
Yeah. It has not been brought before the Board of Commissioners, ma'am. Now, let me, oh, we, will know, no, it we will know. We will know what they signed for us. <coughs> we will know what yeah. you all signed was signed for well, us. Maybe we will have them. access to what the commissioners signed with Destination Cleveland County. What we will not have access to is what Destination Cleveland County signs with Earl Scrubs. Yeah. But look, what well, I Destination Cleveland County needs to let us know what Earl Scrubs is asking for. This group here and among other people, we need to know what they're asking for. Uh, it's, we, it's uh, our, the paper's not going to print what this group but of people our like thing to know. is that we should, we need to have a say, we should have a say so of whether we don't work, you know, Earl Scrubs and, and our other musicians uh, we can have an exhibit in there that encompasses all the people of Cleveland County yeah. and all the musicians of Cleveland County. I think that's what we want. We want a, in there that encompasses all, uh, uh, all of our governors and all of our sports leaders and everything. This is just a whole big smart sport hoopla of all of us and everything. But and if they want to do an Earl Stroke Center, let them do like they're doing with John Stroke, uh, Earl John Gibson. Let them go sign a building. What I don't get, Brenda, is, Brenda, is this. The county commissioners are saying that they have not given any final they have fact. They, they have say it. there's no contract. Mm -hmm. Well, where do they get the authority to go up in our museum, start taking our artifacts that have been there? I'm looking into that. And, and doing what they want. And hiring all these people to come and watch the TV down here in the county. I'm looking into that. I'm looking into that. They're not taking them. No, they're no, still no. there. Yeah, they I know that. I know that. But I wanted to be able to answer. Please, make yeah. aware of that. Yeah, they're not. And the people that are volunteering are doing a wonderful job, yeah. and they are volunteers. And some of these people that are volunteering feel exactly the same way that you all do about questioning about it being an old stroke center. And they are taking care of it. They're doing a wonderful job of doing this. And when I say I'm looking into that, I'm trying to follow that paper trail and see how this happened. In 1972, right. when this museum was formed, I want to know if the artifacts were given to the museum or if they were given to the, the uh, county for the use in the museum. This is what I think it is. So I think that artifacts actually do belong to the county. And I think that David Deere, as our county manager, does have authority to let these be seen. Now this is all what I think. I'm going to check on this. But I think he does have the authority to let these people go in there and catalog and do what they do. And they are doing a wonderful job. I think that everybody would agree. Would you not agree? Uh, uh, did you have something you would say, Margaret? I want to say Margaret Shea. Eddie, I want to know why on November the 10th you told me that it's not a done deal. And you tell our people to see anything that was done. Why did you do that? And then on the 20th, you got up and said, I've heard enough. Let's vote. Did right. you not know 10 days before then what was going to happen? A done deal is a contract that is presented to the county commission. The motion on the floor of the county commission on November the 20th was that a formal document be negotiated between the county manager DCC and the county attorney and brought back to the Board of Commissioners for discussion. Is it, am I right, Ms. Ms. Yeah. Yep. That's what I meant by yeah. that. I well, didn't you mean didn't have a contract, <coughs> ma'am. And that's, what, that's when uh, Mr. Hutchins stood up and said, wait a minute, we're supposed to have something on writing on this. Yeah, that, that's that, that, in the that, that, That's exactly what he said. When I asked that question, the members agreed. We did not proceed with a verbal contract with anyone. That particular night after the question was asked, they decided to let county manager and some of them look at it and see what they would want. Also, in, in this contract, it should be what we want. And I said, we would be the people. And let me, let me address that. Let me ask you all in here. Wait just a minute. Let me, let Go ahead. Me. We have discussed the possibility of, of opening a commissioner's meeting at the, at the end of the commissioner session, business session. 
for the, the citizens of the county to come in and have a question and answer period or at least allow them the freedom of expressing their opinions on this. And I, I think what you're saying tonight is, is an example of what probably needs to be said on, on the floor of the Board of Commissioners at the, at the end of a, of, a, of a regular scheduled business session and give you an opportunity to speak and in some way when you're sitting where we're sitting it's hard it's very difficult to gauge the, the total circumference of Cleveland County it's it's a large county and and to try and, and try to to get a feel as to what every a good cross section of the county feels, it's it's hard to reach those conclusions. And so, uh, Commissioner Hutchins and I both have discussed putting it before the board to give an opportunity for you to come and any other representation before the commissioners as a joint entity after a meeting. Will you respond? Because I've been to those fourth meetings, and when I finish with my three minutes and I go over and y'all are nice enough to allow me, I get thank you. When I email you, I get thank you. I really won't... Now, I've responded to you. You did. Emails. You did. And you told me that you, you did respond to, to that email and you said that you felt like that you were seeing, uh, uh, that, that you were doing what was best for the, the people of, of, of the county. When I emailed you and... and uh, ask you about the fact that you sat on their planning committee that developed that. And I felt like that if you sat on their planning committee and felt it, that you weren't going to vote against it. And that, that you endorsed it in the name of the community college. I have problems with that. Well, wait just a minute. I did not, well, I do not endorse anything outside the official business of the community college for the, co commit, uh, for the community college. So the community I, college endorsed the Wait just a minute, let me finish. I allowed them to use my name as a supporter of the concept of DCC, as some of the other commissioners did. I was not on a planning board. I was not a representative of Cleveland Community College. I, I'd like to bring this up something. If, uh, if the commissioners would consider putting this on the general ballot, and letting everybody in Cleveland County vote. Would you all like that? Yeah. If y'all have authority to do this, and that way really it takes you, the burden off of everybody, and it's just it's, that's a fair thing. That's, that's a fair thing. thing. I would think that, and if we vote for it for historical museums, let it be historical museum with pay extra taxes. If if it's going to be Earl Scruggs Center, let it be Earl.